what we do in India as our center and also from an ophthalmologist perspective in terms of So systemic chemotherapy for intraocular retinal blastoma. So this has been discussed. We talked about this that the treatment goals for retinal blastoma include saving life, saving the eye, and saving vision as far as possible in that order. Now we have so many therapeutic options for retinal blastoma, the local treatment, the surgical treatment, the chemotherapy, the radiotherapy. And as far as chemotherapy is concerned, it can be used either as a primary chemotherapy for chemo reduction, or it can be used as adjuvant chemotherapy in cases of high risk histopathological features, or it can be used as neoadjuvant chemotherapy like I just showed in my previous presentation in all cases of extraocular retinal blastoma. So I will confine my talk to the systemic chemotherapy that we use for intraocular tumors. So we use the international classification system that has been proposed by Murphy et al. And before we know which cases are candidates for systemic chemotherapy, we should have a thorough knowledge and understanding of this classification system. So these are the group A cases, you know, they're the smallest tumors that don't require systemic chemotherapy. And these are the group B tumors that are all other tumors confined to the retina, not in group A, without <coughs> any benefits or subretinal seeding. Now, when there is minimal subretinal or vitreous seeding, it's a group C tumor. And when there is diffuse vitreous seeding or subretinal seeding, it's a group D tumor. So these B, C, and D are actually candidates for systemic chemotherapy. Again, E, we do not use systemic chemotherapy unless it's a bilateral advanced disease and we're trying to save at least one eye. Unilateral group B cases we treat only by upfront enucleation. So these are the group B cases in which, therefore, if any of these features are present, we do not like to use systemic chemotherapy at our center. Now, when do we use systemic chemotherapy? How do we use systemic chemotherapy and which systemic chemotherapy to use? So systemic chemotherapy, there's nothing new about it. It has stood the test of time over years since the early 1990s when its role was recognized in, in providing increased tumor control and globe salvage rates when it was given prior to external beam radiotherapy, which was the mainstay of treatment for retinal blastoma in those times. Then there was also this uh, recognition that EBRD leads to increased risk of non-ocular cancers and that's also one reason why systemic chemotherapy started becoming more and more popular. So it can be used for large tumors, it can be used for recurrent and relapsed tumors and it can be used as adjuvant therapy. Now group A tumors are we all treat only with focal treatment whether it is laser or TT or a cryotherapy. It's the group B to D tumors where we use focal treatment and systemic chemotherapy. And we also use etoposide on two days. Uh, that is the protocol that we use at our center. And we use BEC as the standard treatment for systemic chemotherapy combined with focal therapy. Some centers also use cyclosporin because uh, to overcome the resistance. And uh, there are papers to show that combining cytosporin with chemotherapy controls intraocular retinal blastoma well. And then again, because of concerns of uh, leukemia with etoposide, there are some centers who advocate two drug chemotherapy with bimbrosine and carboplatin instead of three drug chemotherapy for less advanced tumors. Now, combination therapy is what we use, like most centers worldwide, we combine systemic chemotherapy with focal therapy because. Because studies have shown that chemotherapy alone resulted in tumor lower tumor control rates as compared to combined treatment. So when we use combination therapy, we're basically talking about at our center we don't use laser, we use transpupillary chemotherapy for tumors that are posterior to the equator and cryotherapy for tumors that are anterior to the equator, and we combine it with systemic chemotherapy. So this is all, uh, focal consolidation is done under general anesthesia. For TTT, we use an 810 nanometer diode infrared laser with a large spot size of 1.2 millimeters. The power is increased, uh, it starts from the lowest and then it can go on up to 600 to 650 uh, milliwatts. The, uh, we have to cover the entire tumor and make sure that a take is seen. And for cryotherapy, we're using the triple freeze and thaw technique. So this is one tumor where you know, it has shown a nice response with this kind of combination therapy, systemic chemotherapy as well as focal therapy. This is another tumor, again you can see that the macula was involved and after that the tumor has shown a nice regression with combination therapy. 
So it, at our center, we have published the globe salvage rates, and we found that in our study, we had excellent globe salvage rates with a group A and a group B eyes. Uh, and also with group C, we had satisfactory growth rates. With group D, it wasn't so good, but then it is similar to uh, reports published from other centers worldwide. We all know that group D too much, there is almost a 50% likelihood of saving the globe with this combined therapy. So recently again we published another paper in which we studied the clinical outcome and regression patterns of retinoblastoma that were treated with systemic reduction and focal therapy. And in this paper we included only the group A and the group B eyes that were easy to treat. So we had a good tumor control rate, it was like 93% overall, again 100% group A and 92.4% group B. Eight group B eyes had treatment. Failure. And this was again the treatment results only with systemic chemotherapy and focal therapy. We didn't use any intraarterial, no intravitreal, no periocular. It was just systemic chemotherapy and focal therapy. And we found that larger tumors and those tumors that had proximity to the posterior pole were more likely to fail in group B eyes and there were no serious side effects of this treatment. Thank you for your kind attention. Any questions I'll be happy to take. Uh, I have a question. About the last topic you used to give us, uh, the father, uh, uh, you mean the orbital, right? Orbital or uh, retinoblastoma, yes. right? So that one, uh, you mean uh, after three cycles of uh, chemo, and you're going to give them the uh, MRR, right? And uh, what sign shows in our MRA uh, can give you the choice you do the new clinician? Okay, so what we actually see is if uh, the tumor response was created into four subtypes, there was a complete reduction. When we say complete reduction, it meant that the eye became chrysical, and if there was any optic nerve involvement, that was not seen after chemotherapy. Then there was a category of partial reduction. In partial response, it was that the eye became pre hysical I mean there was still some swelling left in the eye, some tumor was left and the optic nerve also showed partial reduction. For instance, initially it was say if it was like say about 15 millimeters of involvement that regrets to say you know about 8 to 10 millimeters or 5 millimeters but there was residual uh, disease. In complete response it was complete thysis. In partial response, it was partial response, uh, partial regression. Then there was another category in which there was no response. So no response to tumor, but that was very few. Like I showed, in only in group B cases, there were few which didn't show any response. So in those cases, we do another three cycles of chemotherapy. So we go up to six cycles. If in the first MRI, we don't get an adequate response and we feel that the eye is not amenable to nucleation, we repeat three more cycles of chemotherapy and then after six cycles we plan the surgery. So most of the children, they do show this, uh, the eye becomes amenable to enucleation after six cycles, even if they don't after three cycles. Okay. So the, uh, for the radiation, I mean, uh, maybe I, I didn't get you so well. Uh, for the radiation, when, when do you can do that? I mean, uh, before the enucleation? Uh, no, I mentioned it's right? done within four to six weeks of enucleation. Ah, so that is after the enucleation. Within that period, we do the radiotherapy. Thank you. And what is the, um, what, what area are you radiating? So it's the orbital area. And does it go up to the chiasm? No, it doesn't go. Oh yes, it goes up to so the chiasm. So you radiate at an the angle yes, to the chiasm? Yes, yes, In our extraocular it goes up to the chiasm. So you have the nerves involved in the Yes, yes, so because most, of these, the most of these children with orbital retinoblastoma have optic nerve involvement. Right. Some of them is going all the way up to the apex. Yes. So that whole area is radiated. But do you think the, the radiation is going to uh, hurt the, the RI site? Okay, so you go, go up with the tiles. Uh, not to reach the car. So to reach the car, right? But the to reach the, the car, the, the other eye. I mean, do you worry about the You just eye. mentioned the radiation, the radiation the area. All the right? way to the car. The yes. tire. Yes. What about the RI site? There's only an axon ex going through there. Yeah. Radiation won't damage them. It doesn't damage the other no. They're not dividing cells. No. Much less damage than if the tumor regrew yes, in the yeah. brain. Yes. We have to see the pros and cons. Yes. And of course, there's a there's a 
area of brain really because the brain radiation is going right through the brain in a narrow direction. So the radiation is after the implant or before? Yes, yes. So we only put up BMM. We don't use borders implants in these cases. We use BMM implants because the radiotherapy is after the implant. We don't use integrated implants. And, and the implant has no impact on your radiation no, 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 at all? It does. <coughs> Serious complication after the radiation. Radiation. Yeah. radiation. Yeah. After the radiation. We have serious complication. So we did because actually in this study the follow-up was just 25 months. Ah. So we are the children are still under follow-up to look at the long-term yeah. impact of treatment. And uh, uh, <coughs> during the study we didn't have any complications of radiation. Did you do some study on your present master? TRB. Did you study trilaterals? Tri That's a different question. No, no, no. Not okay. Maybe in future. I think trilaterals is so rare, it's hard to do a study. So, so we have one case of trilateral retinal blastoma recently. I would like to take your opinion on that. Uh, we treated that child with high dose chemotherapy and uh, uh, tried bilateral disease. Trilateral retinal blastoma, yes. and what happened was that the, the one, one eye had extraocular retinal blastoma oh. going up to the uh, apex, the other one had intraocular disease, and there was a final uh, pineoblastoma. So, when we treated this patient with uh, high dose chemotherapy, the trilateral retinal blastoma responded to treatment. To yeah, treatment. Right. There was no trace of tumor left after three cycles of chemotherapy. Yeah. But the child developed. Uh, Developed spinal diastasis. So, this happened before we could give radiotherapy. The child initially refused radiotherapy, so we sent the child for systemic chemotherapy. And uh, we had planned to give radiotherapy uh, when they would have agreed. But when we gave initially, uh, we were surprised that after the initial two cycles of systemic chemotherapy, so, the pineal blastoma is a But, <coughs> um, how do you know that the tumor in the brain was trilateral versus metastasis if the tumor was to the cut end of the optic nerve? So, because uh, we had not done surgery. This was only initially we saw the MRI. It was extending into the optic nerve. Yes. But it was not a contiguous spread in the brain. Yes. Yes. It was just the pineal gland area. There was a panel panelodastoma yes. along with bilateral retinoblastoma. So before we could give radiation therapy, when we started with chemotherapy, the panel plan component it completely vanished. Okay. okay. Uh,